the Western Cape has always been at the heart of South Africa's tourism, with thousands and hundreds of people always flocking to this beautiful province to see its magnificence. About the water crisis. Joining me now is David Olifier, who is from the University of Witwatersrand, and he'll be talking to us about the crisis that the Western Cape is faced with with regards to water. David, we welcome you to Talk Yese. Thank you. It's a real pleasure to be here. David, do we really have a water crisis in this province? Yes, the crisis is very bad. If you look at other cases around the world, like Australia and the USA, where they have California and Arizona, those crises have been studied and they're not as bad as what we're having here at the moment. Well, we're joined now later on by a couple of people who will be joining us in our mobile studio. Welcome to Talk SA. Thank you. We welcome you to talk Thank you. So, ladies, something Just take me through that time when the water crisis started in Cape Town. Okay, well, and then it was, um, it was, it was, it was, it affected us because, um, there was a bug going around and then Sasabonbana it's actually because of the water. Okay. And um it, it did affect productivity in Sebenzini because we fell sick and so a lot of money was used there. So not necessarily everyone, but it was just there was a lot of absenteeism. That that's what happened. And uh, it obviously affected productivity in Sebenzini and, and stuff like that, yeah. Mm. Now when in your own home Gunama changes what you in order to adjust to the water crisis. Uh, well, we um, I have to use less water obviously in order to preserve water as well. But so for but and leyo ke into it does affect the budget it does affect mali and um i have to um use more money obviously for to compensate for that and in terms of ukhlamba just everyday life i have to take less showers and less time in the shower so it did affect that as well but it's not a major thing that the main thing is the fact that fneka ndwa selila manzi and fneka ndwa tengi any expense on my joy lang yes so i had i had to adjust my budget accordingly and um i just had to adjust because luckily in the salon data so and now i'm young then salon engine so it wasn't that much but it yeah we are born again yeah born again princess when i see see now with the water shortage and the water crisis in polio christian jenga 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 you know water is life to us we need it to cook we need it to bath we need it to wash clothes so now man's are limited to Cape Town, Sinequa uh, is certain liters. Where they saying if that's, those liters are finished, it's finished. So you have to stop what we are doing. I'm used to take two baths a day. So now so I have two baths once. Kasisela, Amanzimabi, Ayakaka. Sometimes we are stop our time in Bata. Sometimes we are stop our time in because Amanza Weko and it's a big problem again. Because sometimes Amanza Yahamba, Emini, Unga Yasbaz, we are Nini, then we sit on our kids. By a liba look of a little tap, so Amanza Buyeb Sungu. Like day before yesterday, a band found a little downstairs, Mr. Tamans, Ayabu, Zatapa, Itababali Beluvala, Itape bathroom. So he bath ya ba ya kwala at amans yes and so I have to wake up if so kun yok to my man it's a big problem to us. Abantu na banu kula ng la mans uh right. Yes, because sometimes baya ambisa. 
Kenwaya la man. So go kufneke seven say ma litu bas tenge a man sisabanga na got dog ta. Hm impilishin chiganga nan sin samanza shinjil. Isinjile it shinjile ka cool cause isn't doesn't it small sisens and la manzi. Yeah. Mm. And for you people, do you feel that um government has done enough to assist within the crisis? Um, I, I can't really say, ne, but I, I, I am pretty sure, Obana, there are measures that can be put in place in order to accommodate Abandu that have grown Abazotala Apa Ekapa. And the people obviously do come into the city for better opportunities and stuff like that. And within the couple and the, within the past couple of years there's been a huge influx of people that have come to live here because it's a city. And Melba Abe accommodate and alone delay, Melba Ubona Kwakubana, I Bayakula Bandu within the city, Nani and Nitata measures into place, Ba Kwakiwe resources for Ba and E infrastructures in place for Ba, a man's Abe in a forum doing. Hey, can Nitita Baya mates, Kitabelum, Hori mates, Abut Hoka, Retiwa Kiri Pifo Honemonyanga, Pifo Hakes, Imparanans, Retuleta Pelica, and Nataway and Iron Rutalawana Harta Papato. Peter Amohele Happy Who Talk is a Gajikurta Holona Relinyanga, Rebuka Water Crisis, Eza Halang Honey Monamo Cape Town, Hutu Mantamo, I Cape Town, no Ireland Hori, Amo percentage in your thirty five per cent, Elohor ten per cent, Yamezi Alkimets, Ireland Hor Akasa Civiti, So Taba Ena Kitaba Elon Hor Eco, Tihaholo, Gaure Rai, so Hormezi, Kintuelong Hor Rai, Foga, Releba to Mobopilong. With me now are esteemed guests who will be helping us with this conversation from the city of Cape Town. We've got the MMC in an Formal settlements and utilities, who is Anthea Limburg. We welcome you to talk Thank you very much. We also have David Olifir, who is a postgraduate research fellow for the University of Witz, and you're also specializing in doing your research in this specific topic. So we welcome you also to talk SA. Thank you. Good to be here. Let's start with the city. Is this really a crisis? Well, the city believes that dam levels are critically low, uh, under 35%. And as we go into what will be a peak summer season, there'll be greater strain levels uh, on our dam levels uh, because there'll be great uh, large volumes of evaporation. And then generally what happens is that consumption also increases during the hot uh, season. And so there is a risk of our dams declining even further. And so the city is doing all that it can to avoid a situation where our dams become critically uh, low. Um, and obviously we are also trying to bring on new water to avoid a day zero. Mm. David, from your studies, has this problem been looming for a while or did it just hit us by surprise? Uh, this a crisis of this intensity um, hasn't ha is, un is so unlikely to happen that you would probably not see it for in a hundred years. So when you have something this, this intense, um, it's uh, it's quite a, it's impossible to predict it. Mm. Yeah. Then see, are people adhering to the restrictions that the city has put out? Because a lot of people are now limited to a certain number of liters per day per household per individual. Are we really seeing residents adhering to this? Well, the city has driven a very aggressive demand management strategy for the last twenty years, and we've actually introduced restrictions way back as. Uh, as far as 20, 2005, actually. And so we've incrementally increased the levels of water restrictions. We're currently at level five, um, and we are going to be uh, implementing level six water restrictions on the 1st of January, 2018. And what would that entail? So that will entail, uh, obviously, restrictions on commercial and industry users of 45% uh, reduction that's required, 60% reduction uh, in consumption by the agriculture sector. And the city will be targeting households consuming more than 10 and a half thousand liters and looking to install water demand management devices. But it is important to note that we actually have made a great, uh, we've made great progress in that over a year ago, our consumption was about 1.2 billion liters of water per day. And that's just Cape Town. Per day. Mm. Per day. So we've been able to reduce that to just under 600 million liters. So through the collective efforts of every single resident, and we want to harness that, we want to obviously ensure that we can improve on that because that's how we uh, avoid a day zero. Mm. David, how does this impact on businesses? If I have a small salon that 
consumes a lot of water from washing hair. How does that now with these restrictions being put in place, especially if my business is placed within a residential area, how does that impact on me? Well, obviously it's going to make uh, certain lifestyle changes necessary. That applies to households, to all water users in the city. And on the same, on the same um, hand though, the city of Cape Town wants the economy to keep running as efficiently as possible. I mean, that's in the best interests of everybody. So the most important thing is cutting water use that's a luxury use. And there you're talking about watering your lawn, your plants, your swimming pool, that sort of thing. If you cut that out, already you've cut out a huge chunk of the water we, we use. But then, it, then it saves the water that you need for essential purposes. It, uh, it reserves that. And so when it comes to businesses that need water, um, the city is, is obviously going to accommodate the needs. They're not going to let the water crisis um, d uh, d disrupt our economy unnecessarily. Mm. Zanthia, Cape Town is surrounded by water. Is there no way we can use that water maybe for us to, to do our laundry, to bath in? What's the process? Is it even feasible? Well, I think that we are in a very uh, ad beneficial position given that we are a coastal city. So as part of the Z city's water um, resilience plan, we're looking, on, looking at bringing on uh, line new water, uh, about 500 million liters of additional water from alternative supplies. So that will look at desalination, which is the treatment of uh, seawater for drinking purposes. Okay. We're also going to be looking at uh, water reclamation, which is the treatment of wastewater for drinking purposes. And that way we maximize uh, wastewater as well. And then thirdly, we're going to be drilling into aquifers, uh, which is really underground water sources. And we obviously will treat that and put it into our system and those collective augmentation schemes will bring on new water, non-surface water, to ensure that we're not entirely dependent on rainfall to fill our dams. Mm. David, is there hope? Are we looking at a point where we will be out of this crisis? Yeah, there's definitely hope. Um, Cape Townians, South Africans are resilient people. We, we stick together. Uh, we've been through a lot of uh, difficult situations over the past years. We've had uh, fires here in Cape Town. We've had an electricity electricity crisis as a as a nation. And um, what always happens in a crisis, I love my house almost burned down, and everybody pulled together. There wasn't there, there wasn't chaos. Everything just worked. Everybody worked together, and that's how I think South Africans approach crises. We uh, we dig deep and we pull together and we get through. I don't think there's. I'm not worried at all. We've got the, the um, water augmentation coming on board. We've got a deadline where we know we need to um, have it on board by. And people are responding to the calls for restrictions. I don't think there's going to be a problem. That's very true. As South Africans, through adversity, we find a lot of opportunity. Since we're on this uh, uh, water crisis, because our water term level this year are too low than the other years. So um, is it any hope that uh, next year we're going to get our water term level up as it was other years? And then um, if it doesn't rain by next year, are we going to be sitting on the same um, problem, uh, the crisis that we are sitting at now? David, that one goes to you. It'll take about three years for the dam levels to return to their normal level if we have an, an average amount of rain. And uh, during that time, of course, restrictions will have to stay in place, not as bad as they are now, but the host pipe bans, watering your gardens, washing your car, that sort of thing, water uses that you don't need to maintain a good quality of life and your health and so on. If there's no rain again uh, next year, uh, let me just say that it's so, it's so unlikely that that would happen. I mean, the fact that it carried on over three years is something like once in a thousand chance. So that happening, okay, is unlikely. So let's not um, become anxious about that, but let's plan for that. So the city's got its water augmentation uh, plants, its, its uh, aquifer tapping, its desalination plants. There's 20 different things that are on the, in the, uh, online at the moment that are in process of, of getting finished. So by the time next year comes around, there will be a lot of new water sources we've never had before providing us with water. Then we'll also have had our winter rains and so on. So let's not be anxious about that. Uh, you can rest assured that the powers that be are managing the process and they're anticipating that and they, 
going to sort it out. And they're making sure that we will have enough water supply going forward. I'd like to ask how do you go about saving water? What measures are you taking to make it a point that you save water wisely? All right, Rale Bukhanta, this is Anthea. What measures can people within the communities also put in place in order to assist in making sure that we save water? Well, I think it's a partnership. So to answer the question, what we as government are doing is diversifying our water resources so that we can mitigate any future risks of drought. But then the other part of that partnership is the community. We have hosted a range of water exhibitions at different shopping malls across Cape Town to showcase people water saving products that are affordable that you can implement in your house like the retrofitting of your taps um, but then there are very simple things like putting a water bottle in your uh, toilet system and by flushing that automatically re re reduces the amount of water that you use only flushing three times a day when you really need it obviously uh, doing your washing once a week and trying to repurpose that washing water for other household duties and it's about thinking differently about how we consume and utilize water. And this is not only going to be required in the immediate time, this is going to have to be a future a adaptability lifestyle. change to ensure that we change our entire relationship with water. But what health hazards have we recently seen or experienced due to the water shortage? Well, so many people have said water quality has been impacted or affected because of the water shortage which in the city's case, we do not believe that's entirely accurate. We have an extensive water services laboratory. We do water testing every single hour um, across, diff and we obviously do water testing across different sites, water uh, collection sites across Cape Town. Um, and so we ensure that our water quality meets the South African national standard requirements. And so that's obviously one of the key impacts or perceived impacts that's um, had. Through our disastrous management plan, which we've developed, we're now in the first phase of that disastrous management plan, and we've implemented water rationing, which is pressure reduction. And obviously, residents have also been impacted by pressure reduction, and we've tried to assist in alleviating that wherever possible. And these things obviously have to be done as the collective, and this is it what is the city aims to do. a collaborative effort. Before to ensure hore they are saving their water joining us now on Skype ki Rantaus that is Putniki oiling hore he's the media relations from the department of water and sanitation that is Putniki we welcome you to talk SA how are the decisions being made by the department with regards to this crisis Decisions about uh, the responses to the water issues in uh, the Western Cape, and obviously not just the Western Cape, but elsewhere where the drought has hit us in this country, um, are taken jointly by the minister in the Department of Water and Sanitation, uh, together with her counterpart in the Department of Cooperative Governance and, and Traditional Affairs through a structure called the National Disaster Management Center that is under um, the jurisdiction of the Department of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs. But specifically around uh, the Western Cape, there was a meeting of uh, the Minister of Water and Sanitation, the Premier of the Western Cape, as well as uh, the mayors from the different uh, um, uh, cities in the Western Cape, but particularly the city of Cape Town, which is uh, the one that is mostly devastated by the situation in the city. Yes, 
it must be indicated that uh, the response to the water restrictions in the city of Cape Town and, and the Western Cape, but primarily the city, was very slow. And this is not just to the restrictions by the Department of Water and Sanitation, but as well as the restrictions by the city itself. That is why we've always been observing high consumption patterns and therefore uh, none of the, of the reduction of, 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 of the levels of consumption. We have now begun to see uh, the impact of the water restrictions as well as uh, a very uh, concerted effort in terms of uh, compliance monitoring. And therefore the consumption uh, patterns have begun to come down and that will uh, help in terms of ensuring that we do get to um, the winter rainfall season with still some water available, uh, even though it will be in low levels. That is Sputnik Rilebohela Nakoyahao. That was Sputnik Rantau, the media relations officer from the Department of Water and Sanitation. Well, Nike Banole Vitere Hore Rulaga community are two sign, but can soon as I meet Bani Raz Rosha Raz were a medical pill, mentally metrogasi pill, so who shall go hurry? Rosha the Mitzi Gazilla, Espanizing Hosha, Barasa Pegamiza Maniana, Mimiz or Rosha Pagona, regardless of his hood, showerish hood, as very pipe or low flash to let it yellow. Follow who let not all see Ndade, Kali Kamala, Kunogu Tumbonova, Kungo, Sisia Pamiling in the Bayamans, the Singayanzan. How to use the water, how to use the water, and I've got advice for government. There's a lot of houses here, they're going to put the drums when the rain is coming. All the drums, they collect all the drums of the, from the houses to put on the sea, so that, that on the dam, so that that dam is going to be full. Just our closing comments from our panelists. Anything we can give to our communities in terms of saving water and just what the way forward is. David, I'll start with you. I just wanted to say that we've done so well already. We've basically halved our water usage. We've come this far. We've got a little bit uh, further to go. Let's just push for that goal. We see the goal uh, coming. We've got water augmentation coming in. We've got the um, winter arriving at the end of the year and hopefully the end of this crisis. And uh, let's keep hope, let's keep saving water and uh, keep a good attitude about the whole thing. Thank you. Zanthia? Well, the city is doing all that it can to ensure that we bring on new water supply from non-surface water solutions in order to mitigate and avoid a day zero and any acute water shortages. But while we do that, we really need residents to continue working with us. We've made great successes in terms of water savings. We believe we can do so much more, and we urge residents to only use drinking water for essential purposes. Xanthia, David, thank you so much for your time and for your knowledge. I'm sure people in Cape Town and in South Africa and beyond have learned a thing or two, and we really will make sure that we save our water. So thank you for that. Thank you. Ke peteke le bohe hape batho ba nyanga ba leng hore le tsile ka bonga te le lona la bona hore go bo hlokwa ha kana kanang hore re tlhokomele metsi a rona thank you so much for joining us on Tokyo say hope le rata ba ena e ka tswela tsa pele ho di social media pages in Tsarona lona fela gore le hashtag talk sa ka pala re ngwalla ho talk sa at acbc.co.za mo leng gore re ka tla go lona re tlo bua ka tabatsa lona until next time re mo gara di pifo before di pifo di rinka le saleng hanke Thank you.